Hi Keith, this is Daniel Walters. Um, I've got your little baby Harley here. Uh, he's going to be shipped this week to California. And I wanted to give you some instructions and show you a little bit about the hand feeding and how we do it. Now Harley's on three feedings a day, once in the morning, once in the afternoon, and before you go to bed. Uh, he is actually picking at fruit and vegetables and and stuff like that, but not getting enough to survive. So I would feed him three times a day. We use a Zuprene hand feeding formula from Macaws. The only thing I do different for a green wing is I add more fat. And you can do that by adding peanut butter to your hand feeding. Um, the requirements for a green wing are a little bit different than say a blue and gold. They need more fat, just like it would be a hyacinth macaw. And I put them in a tray like this, and this is so if it gets messy, the uh, formula and stuff will just fall through and we can clean it out. I put a ceiling tile in here that he stands on. We're gonna go ahead and mix up the formula. You want to have the temperature 110 or above to start with and then mix it, that'll kill any uh, bacteria or anything in the formula. And then check it before you hand feed to make sure it's not too hot. I can usually run the faucet and get it super hot, then mix it. And by the time I get it all mixed up and ready to feed, it's usually cool enough. Now we're going to use it a little looser than normal. Um, as you get comfortable with hand feeding, you can thicken it and it'll be uh, just fine as far as uh, the feeding. At this point, I want it a little thinner. You can see he's excited to eat. He wants to eat. I'm going to thin it out just a little bit. You stay there, buddy kind of like you would have when you're feeding him in the beginning. Like I say, as you get better, you'll want to thicken it up so he gets more out of it. You can see kind of how loose it is. A little looser than, say, pudding, just like that. We're going to give him 60 cc's at each feeding, which is one syringe like this, 60 cc's. I, I a lot of times will spoon feed them to make it a little easier for you, but his feeding response is so active that it'd be very difficult with a spoon. Here you can direct it a little better. What you're gonna do is draw it up in the syringe. If you have a small hand, only draw up about 30 cc's at a time and do it twice so that your hand can fit. If you get it drawn up like that to 60 and if your hand is small, it's pretty hard to use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop 60. And I'm gonna try to feed a little slower than I normally do. No. And you're gonna see his feeding response is huge. So you want to really hold his head because he's going to bob. And you want to hold the syringe on the right side facing left as you face him, right to left. The tube that goes down to his crop, see when I touch him here he starts bobbing? That bobbing up and down like that tells me that it's okay to feed him at that time. If he doesn't bob when you're touching him here, if you'll put just a little bit Hang on, buddy. He's excited. A little bit in his mouth so he tastes it, he'll start bobbing. In the beginning, it's going to be quite a mess. And then after you get used to it, it'll get better and better. I'm going to start feeding him. Ah! And I'll go, I'll go slow so you can see. What you don't want to do is you want to make sure you don't push that ah! upper beak. I see I'm going nice and slow. There. 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 Ah! And he got it all. And a lot of times, I went a little quicker than you'll probably go. But a lot of times, if you go that fast, he doesn't realize he even got the food. And he may grab you and hang on to your hand or whatever, thinking he's getting some more, he's gonna get some more. So don't take that as if he's biting you, because he's not. He's just excited to get more food. In a, in a few seconds here, a few minutes, he'll realize, oh my gosh, I got a bunch of food, and he'll relax. Should we show him the crop? The crop is probably hard to see, but right underneath here, you'll actually he can be feel a bulge. It. And you don't want to handle him too much after you feed him or he could regurgitate and bring it back up. As he tries to wean himself and doesn't want it, he may regurgitate it a little bit and bring it back up. And that'll kind of tell you, well, maybe I'll go one less feeding. I don't need to do three. If you cut one out, cut out the afternoon feeding and have food in front of him during the day. And he'll get his feeding before he goes to bed at night and then a feeding in the morning. Once you feel like he doesn't need two feedings, then I suggest you just feed him at night before he goes to bed because he's not going to be able to eat in the dark and that'll give him food through the night and then he can start eating again in the morning. 
but he's he's weighing out at a little over a thousand grams now they will go up and down he will probably end up when he's full grown probably around 1500 grams or so I don't like him to lose more than 10% of their body weight when we're weaning I've been trying to wean him so his weight is low right now but if you if you go ahead and hand feed him three times a day keep food in front of him he should maintain this weight and go up and then when you go to to actually wean him you'll find he will lose a little bit of weight in that process and then eventually start growing again and uh, getting that weight again very friendly very nice um, we're gonna give him a few baths before he gets shipped you can see his feathers are a little rough but uh, we'll bathe him a few times and then he'll be Isn't he sweet? he'll be on that big airplane coming to see ya <laughs> and uh, you call me and let me know what you think and and how awesome this little guy is. Thank you so much, Keith, and uh, Harley's gonna be on his way. We're always just a phone call away, buddy.